do you know who I am? And I look at him and I'm like, no. And he's like, I'm your dad. You know, I never felt loved. I never felt wanted. I had to tell people, look, I'm gay and I'm being stalked and I have to run away. You can't go to sleep when you're in pain. Doctors were telling me that I might have to do amputation. Like it got really, really bad. Hey, how are you guys? So today I want to talk about my childhood, which I rarely talk about just because I don't have the greatest memories. I prefer not to think about it. And it's funny how, you know, some of my followers and people who don't really know me, they say to me all the time, oh, you are so happy all the time. Your life must be perfect. And I'm just like, yeah, if only you knew. Um, I don't even know where to begin, I guess. Let's start from the beginning. You know, my life, um, I, I was born in Romania. And I'm gonna start with the first bad event in my life, which I don't even remember because I was too young. Uh, at two years old, my parents decided to move to America to make money and take care of us. At least that's what they said to us and to the family, but it was not true. So they moved to America and me and my siblings, I was two years old. My siblings were a little bit older. I think they were six and eight. Uh, so they remember when my parents left, I don't even remember, uh, they left us with uh, other family members. Um, and we also got separated. We didn't even stay together. Like me and my siblings, we didn't even stay in the same household. Like for example, my brother stayed with my grandmother, my sister stayed with my uncle, I stayed with my aunt and so forth and so on. And I didn't even stay in the same household the whole time that my parents were in the US. I stayed with my aunt for two years, with my uncle for one year, for my with my grandmother for like another year and a half. So I never knew, I never learned stability. I never learned safety. That's why as an adult, I developed severe anxiety, like severe anxiety just because you know your brain develops a lot and learns a lot from age one through seven uh, that's when your brain forms and learns love stability safety those kind of things that i never learned uh but we're gonna get to that later and um so yeah and and you know living with you know grandmother and your aunt when, and your uncle um they were not bad people. I'm not gonna say anything bad about them, but I always felt like I was a burden to them because, you know, they, you know, you know how it is. Nobody loves you like your own parent, you know, like nobody's gonna take care of you like your own parent should take care of you. And my parents didn't take care of me, but a normal parent would. And um, I always felt that energy like, I, I wouldn't want you to be here, but you are here because your parents left to the US, so you have to be here. You know, I never felt loved. I never felt wanted, you know? Um, so I, as a kid, I, I felt that. And then um, I saw my dad for the first time in my life when I was about five and a half years old. He he divorced my mom while in the U.S. My mom stayed in the U.S. My dad came back and he came to pick me up from the country. I was staying with my grandmother at that time. And I actually do remember this moment. So I don't remember when they left at two years old. I was way too, too young. But I do remember the moment he picked me up when I was like five and a half. I do remember this moment. I don't remember the exact words, but I do remember what we talked about a little bit and certain words. So I remember that I saw a guy walk into to the gate. I was outside playing in the in the yard and I saw, I saw a guy coming to the gate and, and I go to the gate and I'm like, uh, hi, who are you? And he said, uh, or no, I said, hi, how are you? Or something like that. And he said, I'm good. Is your grandmother home? And I said, yeah, yeah, she's in, she's in the house. And he's like, do you know who I am? 
And I look at him and I'm like, no. And he's like, I'm your dad. And I'm like, okay. Because one of the things that people don't understand is when you, when you don't, when, when, you, when you don't grow up with your parents, you don't develop that love. Like, I, don't even, I didn't even know who he was. So I was like, okay, you're my dad, great. But I didn't feel that excitement like you would if you knew your dad until the age of five and they left for one month and they came back, you would be all over them. For me, it was like, okay. So anyway, he gave me a hug and he picked me up from my grandmother. He picked up my siblings from my aunts and my uncle. And... And we all moved to Brasov. And I thought it was gonna be so much better. I was like, yeah, my dad is back. He got remarried. I, we had a stepmom. And I thought it was gonna be so much better. And it wasn't. My dad, the only thing that he cared about was uh, his business. Like he worked a lot and uh, tried to open business after business. He opened different businesses. He went bankrupt, started another one. So that was my dad growing up. And uh, he was drinking, he was an alcoholic. So I would always remember my dad either working or drinking. So um, I don't have any memories with my dad. Like I don't remember spending time together, not even eating dinner together. Like we never ate together. We never had like, we probably had dinner together as a family two times, three times in five years. I don't remember that. He was very cold, very cold. He only cared about himself. He was very selfish. He was, he cared about drinking, spending time with his friends and working. He always worked hard. I can say that about my dad. And, um, and that's pretty much it until 10 years old, uh, un until the age of 10, when uh, my dad and my mom, my real mom that was living in New York at that time, they decided that me and my siblings should move to New York. So that was also the first time that I saw my mom. <laughs> I never saw my mom until the age of 10. And I, I kind of have, the, I had the same, um, the same reaction like I had with my dad. Like when I saw her, she was like, oh, my son, come here. I was like, hi, mom. Like, who are you? Like, what is this? Like, I never developed that love because they were not there for me. And also my mom, same like my dad, not the greatest human being, well, not the greatest mom, not human being. Um, like, she never called me. Like, okay, you couldn't come from the U.S. to Romania to visit. I think she was, she was, um, she was an illegal citizen at that time. So I know you couldn't leave the country. I get that. But you could call me. You could talk to me. You could send me a letter. You could send pictures. I spoke to my mom from the age of five to the age of ten, maybe twice from what I recall, and even that phone call was short. Hi, how are you? This is your mom. I hope you're well, bye. Like maybe twice. So she never even bothered to call me. Like, so when, so when we moved to her, in, uh, to New York City to live with her, again, I was kind of excited. I was like, wow, it's gonna be nice. I'm gonna be with my mom. It must be amazing. And it wasn't, it wasn't, she was not good to us. You know, she was so bad to us that my siblings, they ran away. <laughs> That's how bad she was, you know, her and my stepdad, they were very bad to us. So my siblings, my older siblings, they were 16 and 18, they ran away to Atlanta. I would have run away too, but I was too young. I was 10 years old. So I got stuck there for five years until the age of 15 when I ran away as well, but we'll get to that later. And uh, all I knew for five years was, like even now when I think about the age of 10 to 15 when I was living with my mom, the only thing that I remember, not the only thing, but what I remember the most is that cold, negative, bad energy in the house. I've never seen somebody so cold. Like we, like, like I was not allowed to have friends. I was not allowed to go out. <clears throat> At the dinner table, we wouldn't talk. There's no talking, silence, like that kind of a life. Like it's so sad. Um, very strict, very cold. She never hugged me. She never told me she loves me. She never. Like, and everything that I did was my fault. Like I remember, like. 
of course as a kid you make mistakes you, you you know stuff like that happens but like even like when i would get sick i would get a flu you know when you are sick every parent that i you know all parents that i see they're like oh my son is sick they pamper them they make them soup they like i remember when i got sick my mom would blame it on me oh you got sick because you didn't wear clothes you were so bad you're horrible you're like even when i got sick she was so mean to me so like I never felt loved by her, like very, very cold human being. Even the way she lives with her with her husband, my stepdad, very cold. Like they stay, stay in separate rooms, watch different TVs. There's barely any communication. That's how she lives. And I don't want to talk about her and her life and her husband. No, I want to talk about me. Uh, but unfortunately, I had to live with her and I had to live in that energy. So it was very bad. And at the age of 15, I couldn't take it anymore. And I ran away too. Uh, I went to my siblings in Atlanta. And um, I mean, imagine how bad the situation was with my mom that I chose at the age of 15 to run away to another state to change schools, to get a job and to take care of myself. Like, imagine how bad the situation has to be. Nobody wants to work. Nobody wants to change schools. Nobody. That's how bad the situation was. I, I, was, I just wanted to get away. So I went to Atlanta where I got a job. My first job at the age of 15. I worked at Krispy Kreme. It's a donut place for those people who don't know. If you're from the South, I'm sure you know. <laughs> I love Krispy Kreme donuts, especially the hot ones. They're so good. With milk, oh my God. I got a little chubby while working there. Mm, and um, yeah, and I finished high school. I worked at Krispy Kreme for two years. And uh, uh, the situation with my siblings was amazing. You know, like me and my siblings, we formed a really strong bond because our parents were so horrible to us and they never took care of us. They never protected us. We learned to help and protect and love each other, especially my older siblings. They did that more to me than I did it to them because they were much older than me. So they, I really felt the love and we, we, have, we still have the connection to, to this day. We're very, very close. I feel very blessed. So the situation with them, with them was good, but it was, uh, it was hard as a 15 year old to go to school, go to work. You know, like, you know, I was kind of poor. I didn't have a lot of clothes. I didn't feel good about myself. Like, it, it was just not, it, it wasn't a happy time. I was happy to be with my siblings, but I, it was still not a happy or good time for me. Like, I wasn't that teenager that could go to a party, dress good, drink, party. I didn't know what a drink was. I never tried drugs. I never, I never had time for that. So, I, I didn't have those kind of teenage years. And then when I finished high school at the age of 18, I really wanted to go back to Romania because um, I forgot to talk about this, but uh, when I moved from Romania at 10 years old to the US to my mom, I talked about my family not being amazing, but I forgot to say that it was so traumatizing for me as a kid immigrating to a new country not speaking english i went from romania where okay the situation with my family was bad but i had so many friends and romania is a country surrounded by mountains we have a lot of nature a lot of forests so me and my friends we would be outside almost every day playing hiking climbing trees there were no video games back then well some of them did have video games not me i was poor but I, I don't care, I'm happy that I got to be outside in nature for years. So when I moved to the US, nobody asked me if I wanted to move. My parents took that decision for me and my siblings. So I was four, so I went from Romania where I had so many friends and I was like a happy kid with my friends outside to the US where I didn't speak English, I had no friends, I had a strict and mean mom. Like I was just, it was traumatizing and um, and even going to school, like for the first couple of months, the way that I went to school was like this. I learned two phrases because I spoke no English at the age of 10. I had to learn English when I moved to the US. I knew no English in Romania. So when I went to school in New York at the age of 10, for months, the only thing that I knew was 
my name is, of course, my name. And then if somebody asks me another question, I don't speak English. That's all I knew. And I was sitting in my classroom eight hours, seven hours, eight hours a day, like every other uh, 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 student and not understanding what teachers were saying, not under understanding what students were saying. So that was traumatizing for me. That's, that was not a good moment. So at the age of 18, when I finished high school, because I was taken away from Romania without my, without me wanting to go, I always wanted to go back. And also my dad at that time, I told you he opened business after business. He went bankrupt a couple of times. But uh, the last business that he opened a couple of years ago, he actually made a lot of money with it. He became wealthy in Romania. And I also said, you know what, maybe now going back to my dad so many years later, uh, I'm an adult now, maybe things will be better. We can rekindle the relationship. Um, but it wasn't like that. It was actually worse. Uh, he was just like before, selfish and uh, ego egocentric and all of those things. And on top of that, he was wealthy and he had that superior energy. Like I was working for him. I was a bartender in his business because he had like a restaurant and a club and I was a bartender. And like if he, if he asked me for coffee with cream and sugar, I had to mix the cream and sugar until it got completely dissolved or he would be upset. Like that kind of energy was between us. And um, also he paid me as he paid me as much as the other employees, the strangers. The only difference between me and his other employees was that I had to work 10 times harder on my days off. He would call me and be like, why are you not here? Like, like we need you right now. Come here. Like, this is a family business. You have to work hard. Like this is for us. So when you came, when it came to the work, I had to, to work hard when it came to the money and the profit, that was all his, that was, he, he gave me none of it. I had a small salary like everybody else. So uh, a bad situation, a very, very bad situation. Uh, that's when I realized that the situation with my parents is, is done. Like childhood, you treat me bad. As an adult, you treat me bad. It's just not a good situation, you know? And, um, and, uh, and that's when I, when I, also when I moved back to Romania, that's when I learned that my dad had so much money. And when I, when I was in Atlanta at the age of 15, all by myself with my siblings, a minor, that's when I realized he never sent me one dollar, you know, like he had around one million dollars, like money at that time, which was a lot for Romania at that time, still a lot for Romania. One million dollars is a lot for the US, it's imagine for a small country. So he had so much money, he never sent me one dollar, not even one. I didn't even have a car in Atlanta. Like people had to give me rides to go to work. He, no, he never bought me a car. Again, he never sent me one dollar. He never asked me how I'm doing. He never called me. Like my dad has always been very cold too. He never, like my dad never called me in my life without wanting or needing something like come to work or do this or never. He never called me to be like, hi, how are you? Or I miss you or I love you. No, he never did that. So that's when I learned that the situation with my parents is really, really bad. And I need to figure out what to do with my life because my family is just, is never gonna be there for me. And then at that time, my dad also lost his business because the, the, can, uh, the economy went down. Uh, this was 2007, 2008, and he, had, he lost his business. And uh, me and my older brother, we decided to move to New York and just start from zero and figure out what we need to do and start start from zero start start from scratch so we moved from new york we moved to new york and um i worked every job in the book every job that you can think of just to make a living i started working as a bus boy i worked as a waiter as a cashier as a bartender and then as a dancer i worked every job that i could so that i could pay my rent and my bills and um that was also the time that I came out of the closet uh, in my early 20s in New York City. 
um, I felt like it was an opportunity because the situation was so bad with my parents. Um, I didn't care about them. They didn't care about me. And I used that to, the, to my advantage because I feel like most people who don't come out of the closet is because they don't want to disappoint their parents. They love their parents, you know, but you know, our parents come from a different generation. Being gay was a horrible thing back then. And because they don't want to disappoint their parents, they don't come out of the closet. And, and I get that. I, maybe I would have done the same. Uh, but because I feel nothing for my parents and then they don't deserve none of that really from me, I was like, you know, I'm just going to come out of the closet and be free. If I never had loving parents, I never had support, at least I can be free and do whatever I want. And I came out of the closet and the situation was okay. I mean, my siblings, they are young. They're from my generation and they just said they don't care. I can do whatever I want. And whatever my parents had to say, I don't even know what they had to say because when they found out that, I, that I'm that i gay, uh, they found out from different people, not from me, and I don't even care what their reaction was. I, it's not, none of my concerns. Unfortunately, I was not lucky in the gay community either. The first person that I met and lost my virginity to in my early 20s, that's when I lost my virginity, pretty old enough. I was 21 or 22. I, I can't recall one of those. And uh, so the first person that, uh, that I met and that I lost my virginity to, we dated for a few months and then we broke up. I broke up with him just because it was not a healthy relationship. He was very controlling. He like he like he was just not a good I don't want to go into details about this either. It's not uh, but um, he was not a good person and I, I decided to break up with him. Unfortunately, what he did afterwards was something that I didn't expect. He he stalked me for two years. It got so bad to the point where he, where he would leave me threats in the messages like he's going to kill me if he sees me with somebody else. He's going to burn my house. He's gonna, he was following me around. I would see him in the corner of my street. I found him in the entrance of my building. It got so bad that I had to run away from New York City again. <laughs> so um, even though I was making a life for myself and I, I, um, I started making some money and saving some money, I had to run away because the situation with this person got so bad and so out of control that... Um, I had to run away and actually I, 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 I made a little mistake. I was still in the closet when I was dating him and when he was stalking me, I was still in the closet. And uh, that's when I actually came out of the closet. When, when I moved from New York City, I couldn't take it anymore because I couldn't talk to anyone about the situation. I was so young and he was much older than me. Um, older, bigger person, you know, like, um, so even physically, I was scared of him. And that's when I came out of the closet. I couldn't handle the situation anymore. I didn't care what my parents had to say. And I had to tell people, look, I'm gay and I'm being stalked and I have to run away. So that's when I actually came out of the closet. And I moved to Atlanta <laughs> again. So I moved back and forth my whole life. Like, it's crazy. Like, I never had stability and my, my anxiety kept getting worse and worse, especially after I got stalked. My anxiety was so bad that I couldn't get leave the house. Um, prior to my life before and him stalking me, my anxiety was so bad that that is when I started doing therapy. That's, that is when I started taking medication because I, uh, I hit rock, rock bottom. I moved back to Atlanta with my uh, older sister at that time and I hit rock bottom. I didn't know what to do. And uh, also at that time, I started having a, a really bad problem with my feet. Uh, I actually made a video about this. I'm not going to go into a lot of details because I need a full video just about this. But I had a really bad health problem. I had many health problems in my life, but this one was the worst. It got so bad that I couldn't walk. I had trouble walking for two years. I was diagnosed with Berger's disease. The pain was so bad. 
that what I had to do every night to go to bed, most people don't know this, but because the pain was so, it was bad. I had pain in my feet for about two, three years every day, nonstop. But when you go to bed, you know, you can't go to sleep when you're in pain. So when I would go to bed, this is what I would do. I bought two big buckets, like, I'm sorry, two big uh, garbage bins like this. I, I filled the, I made, I put one with the, let me, let me think. I put one with hot water and one full with the, with ice. And I would put my feet every night for one hour in hot, and cold, hot and cold for me to, to be able to go to bed. Like it was just really, really bad. And I couldn't walk, like I couldn't. And that's when I stopped working as a dancer and I didn't know what to do. So that's when I started to work on video chat. I also did video chat for a few years. And that is when I moved to Romania. <laughs> I moved so many times that it's hard to keep track. You need a map. When I talk about my life, you need a map. Like you need ma map and pins and years because it gets confusing. And I moved back to Romania. I worked on video chat and I started seeing doctors and all of that. So for about three, four, five years, all I did was spend time with doctors. Like I, um, I saw different doctors in Atlanta, in Romania. I spent all of my money and time on doctors. Um, I did all kind of tests. I did all kind of uh, treatments, pills, injections. Um, anyway, I, I uh, and, and that is when I changed my lifestyle, to be honest with you, because prior to this health problem, I was a smoking cigarettes every now and then a social smoker uh i was not drinking water i was not eating healthy i was working out but i wasn't taking care of my diet and when i had this health problem that is when everything changed that's that is when i realized that oh my god life you know like you can die in a second like doctors were telling me that I, they have to amputate my my uh my left my my right foot was turning blue doctors were telling me that I might, I might have to do amputation like it got really really bad that's when I changed everything you know I I started eating healthy drinking only water I stopped smoking and in time my health slowly got better I had I had pain in my feet for about four years the two years were horrible pain, like I'm getting goosebumps, it was horrible pain. And then the last two years slowly getting better because I changed my lifestyle and now I am much better and much healthier, but because I worked on myself. And um, and yeah, so I did video chat for a few years until my online stuff, YouTube and everything that I do kind of picked up and I was able to make a living out of, out of this. So, uh, <laughs> You know, my life hasn't been perfect. You know, my life is, you know, like when I look back, I see so much misery and sadness and anxiety. Like actually now I feel happier and better and healthier and more loved than I've ever been. And that is because I've created a good circle of people. Um, I'm very close to my siblings. Oh my God, my siblings were, we have the same connection that we've always had. I have a strong circle of friends. I have the same friends that I've had for 10 years. Um, so I made a, 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 now I've created a life for myself that I consider it to be happy most of the times, but that is because I worked really, really hard and I never gave up. And in the worst moments of depression and anxiety, I just, I saw a little light at the end of the tunnel. And that's why I tell people all the time, you know, don't give up, you know, life can be hard. And believe me, I skipped probably a lot of moments. This was just a, a small summary of my life. It was, it was hard, you know, life can be hard, but don't give up, you know, it's worth living. We only have one life, you know, just make the best of it, live life the way you, you want to live it. And that's it. Don't worry about other people. Now I'm at a point where I don't care what people have to say. I don't care. Like if I'm happy, I, I don't care. If, if Like if I want to wear something and you don't like it and 
I feel like it looks good on me. I feel happy with it. I don't care what anyone has to say. And I think this is a strong, healthy mentality that I wish I had when I was, you know, younger. And um, so, yep, that's about it. Um, I hope I didn't make you sad with my life. I'm not trying to be... Um, I didn't make this video to try to be a victim because um, I, I don't like that. I hate when people consider themselves like victims. I don't want, I don't like the victim role. I feel like it doesn't do any good for your life. I don't like people go, coming to me be like, oh, poor Elaine, you know, like, you know, like I hate that. Like, no, it's okay. So that's why I don't like to talk about my health problems, my childhood or anything bad. Like, I said some stuff in my other videos. I talked about it once and then that's it. I don't like to keep going back and forth all the time because I don't want to relive it and I don't want to think about it and I don't want people to consider me a victim because I'm not a victim. I don't want to be in a victim role. That's what I had to go through to become the person that I am today. And the reason why I made this video is to convince other people that even though your life m might be bad now, if you work really, really hard and you don't give up, it's going to get better. I promise you. That's all for today. I hope you have a good one and I'll see you next time with a happier video. I promise. Bye.